In this module, you will learn about corrugated fiberboard. Corrugated fiberboard is made from at least one liner board and one flute. Single face board has only one liner, thus it is flexible. Often it is used to protect fragile products. Single wall board consists of two liners and one flute. It is more rigid and is widely used in shipping boxes. For heavy contents, boxes are made from stronger double wall or triple wall boards. This slide compares some defective flutes with normal flutes. Defective flutes will reduce the strength of the corrugated board. This slide gives some physical properties of different flute sizes from A to KS even though most follow the same patterns, that is A is the thickest and N is the smallest. However, B flute board is thinner than C flute. Flutes A to E are the most common types. C flute corrugation is the most frequently used, with 80% of boards and boxes making up this designation. However, the alphabetical designations of the flutes don't correspond to the sizes of corrugated boxes, but rather to the order in which the flutes were invented. This slide lists qualities and common uses of different flutes. For example, C flute gives good printing surface, compression and crush resistance. It is most common flute used for shipping boxes. The diagram on the left shows some terminologies. The flute part is also known as medium. It should be noted that the orientation of liners, where the machine direction or MD is perpendicular to the flute direction. The right diagram shows how a single wall board is made. A liner is fed into the machine from the left. The medium is fed from the bottom. The medium touches adhesive, which is starch-based. Then the medium or flute is attached to the liner. Later another liner is attached to the other side of the flute. Each shipping box has a box certificate printed on the bottom face of the box. It contains various information, including corrugated strength either burst strength or ECT strength. Burst test is performed by inserting a flat corrugated board into the burst tester. The machine will clamp the board. Then pressure is inserted from the bottom until the board is punctured. For edge crush test, there are three TAPPI standards. The first is based on TAPPI T811. The specimen is waxed on two edges that will be clamped to the machine. This is to increase the strength at the supports and avoid the failure coming from the clamping. In TAP PT838 method, the specimen is necked down as shown. This is to create a weak section for failure. The purpose is the same as previous method. The failure at the clamped ends is avoided. The most recent method is based on TAP PT839. The specimen is put into a special fixture. When the clamping force is about right, the fixture will prevent the clamp to continue with more force. This is to avoid damages from the clamping. I hope you have enjoyed this workshop so far.